Hi! Some of you might remember a few weeks ago I put out the feelers for a sort of what I would wear to insert scenario here style video um, and lots of you responded with a thumbs up and lots of um, great suggestions for scenarios so I took that as a sort of go ahead do it. Um, so this is that video I have picked 10 looks for 10 different kind of scenarios slash social engagements slash you know just things that we have not been able to do for a very very long time. Um, I picked 10 because I thought that was a very good round number. Um, I also didn't want to make this video really really long because I don't want to bore you to death. I would like you to actually return to my channel and continue watching. So I picked 10 with the intention of doing maybe like another 10 in a separate video. So if people like this video I might actually do it again um, with some of the other suggestions that I wasn't able to fit into this video. So if I've not been able to do your suggestion I do apologise. It will be coming in another video. Um, so yeah, this will be interesting because it's been, it's actually been quite tricky picking some of the outfits for these scenarios, um, simply because we just haven't had to actually think about these things for so long. So this video is going to be in partnership with Farfetch. So I did mention, I think it was last month or the month before, that I would be partnering up with Farfetch on a slightly longer term basis. So there would be a few more sponsored videos with them coming up. So this is my second video in partnership with them. Um, and basically, don't worry. This is not going to be some really heavily product placed, sponsored feeling video. What Farfetch have done is basically gifted me some pieces to include um, in this video, which is great because I can show you some new pieces from some of my favourite designers. And actually, when I was um, putting together the outfits for these uh, scenarios, I noticed that a lot of the pieces I actually own and have owned for a long, long time um, were also bought through Farfetch. So it actually feels like a really nice natural collaboration. Now, before I get started, just in case some of you don't know who Farfetch are or what Farfetch is, I've rambled on about them enough in the past. Farfetch is a website that acts as a kind of home for lots of um, shops around the world. It's kind of like a shop front for lots of like small boutiques. So when you're shopping on Farfetch, it's more than likely that you're supporting a small independent boutique somewhere, which is really nice. It's a great way to support small businesses. Businesses. Sorry, I sounded really weird then. It's also a lovely place to find new upcoming designers because Farfetch are great at supporting new designers. They always have a whole like host of just amazing new designers on there. And it's also a great place to shop um, pre-loved designer and also to find hard to find pieces. I think I've said before, if you can't find something, get over to Farfetch because most of the time I have found the hard to find pieces on Farfetch simply because you're shopping from so many different boutiques, it's very likely that you'll find what you're looking for. Um, so yes, I will of course let you know which pieces are from Farfetch in the description box um, just for transparency, um, but I am very pleased to announce that I can give you 10% off again. So I will insert the code here and then all of the T's and C's will be in the description box as well. Okay, so 10 looks, 10 scenarios, let's go. Starting with what I would wear on a hike slash camping trip slash road trip sort of thing. So basically what I wear when we go on our camper van trips, which is great because I've just come back from our Scotland trip. I'm now prepping for a trip to Wales. Um, so I can pretty much show you what I have been wearing and what I plan to wear. I'm gonna insert cutaway. So this will now switch to a cutaway in just a moment. But if you see me looking down, it's because I'm trying to kind of narrate the cutaways at the same time, because I want my narration to fit with the cutaway, if that makes sense. So you'll see me in the corner, just kind of looking at my computer screen. Um, you'll also have to excuse any dancing that you might see, any terrible dancing that you might see during these cutaways, because whilst I was filming, I was listening to Late of the Pier, which if you have listened to Late of the Pier, you know they do induce some quite bizarre dancing. Okay, so from head to toe, White tank top is from weekday, I think, quite a while ago. Um, when I go on, when we go on these kinds of trips, trips, <laughs> I need to just slow down. <laughs> trips, trips. When we go on these types of trips, I always want to be comfortable. 
and practical. So my base layer tends to be a tank top. There's me just getting, you know, getting my strut on. And then I'm wearing some cargo pants from Nike. So these, I've got a drawstring waist and they've got really nice deep pockets, a cargo pocket on the side and drawstring bottoms. And then I'm wearing my XT6 Solomon trainers, which are just awesome, really comfortable, uh, practical walking trainers. And I also tend to carry around a sweater with me tend to wear it around my waist, um, but also can just fit, put it in my rucksack. I would have a rucksack on, by the way, if this was actually me out walking. I haven't included it in this look, but there would be a rucksack on as well. But yeah, can either just do this with a sweater or also a fleece is a great um, option as well. I wanted to insert a slightly different trouser option. So the previous trousers I just showed you, the Nike ones, are a cotton trouser. So they're really uh, comfortable and breathable. Um, but if you were looking for something maybe uh, shower proof and, and even more lightweight actually, these sweaty bitty trousers are awesome. They're also drawstring waist with the drawstring bottoms. But like I said, they are shower proof. With the previous trousers and these trousers, they're both baggy enough to wear uh, leggings underneath. So if it was quite cold, you could pop some thermal leggings underneath. Also, just wanted to add with this look and the previous look, if it was raining, I would have some sort of uh, kind of anorak with me as well. Um, but this is the basic kind of elements of my camping slash walking slash um, hiking outfit. Now, someone suggested um, what I would wear to, or what I would wear in a shared uh, office space or in a co-working space. Now, when I first read this suggestion, I thought, hmm, surely you can just wear what you want. Like, this is an easy one because you're in a shared, you know, you know you're in a co-working space. It's not a traditional environment where you're, you've got staff members around you and a boss. You're literally in a space where you can kind of do as you please. But then I was thinking back to when I joined my studio. So in May, I joined a co-working space that's, um, it's like a creative co-working space. So everyone who's in there has, um, is within the creative industry. So there's loads of cool people in there with really cool jobs. And the, the day before I, like the day before my first day, I had a real wobble and I was like, I don't actually know what to wear. Um, it didn't help that for the past sort of like 18 months, we hadn't really been out and about much. You know, we'd been in several lockdowns. So this kind of like concept of going out and actually putting some, something nice was a bit alien to me. I was a bit like, hmm, I've kind of forgotten how to do this. But also I wanted to make a good impression, even though these people weren't necessarily my direct colleagues, I was going to be sharing a space with these people and I was like, I actually want to put, you know, I want to make a good impression. So actually, this suggestion is a really good one, I think, because there is still that kind of concern about what to wear, I think, in these spaces. I mean, you can go super relaxed if you want, um, but I'm gonna show you two outfits that I've been wearing quite regularly to the studio. So it has cooled down a lot here quite recently. So one of these looks does feature a jumper and is a bit more relaxed. It's this first look that's now, I'm now about to walk on the street on the screen and show you. So you can see it's quite relaxed, it's quite slouchy, but I still feel like it's quite chic, um, which is always a balance that I kind of want to strike with studio outfits. So I want to be comfortable, but I want to still feel like a chic lady. So I'm wearing this jumper from Co. Um, it's really slouchy, it's got a nice bat wing sleeve and a high low hem, and then some baggy tapered trousers from Cos. Um, and then on my feet, I'm wearing flats, um, but I feel like these are quite smart and kind of unique because they've got a square toe detail. They're from Heru via Farfetch. And then my bag is from Cos. So this is a huge, huge, huge tote bag, um, which can also be worn cross body. You can literally fit everything in there. It's awesome. I will just stuff it full. I can pretty much fit myself in there. This is me rather jokingly trying to um, demonstrate that, ha ha ha. <laughs> but yeah, this is, um, I just feel like a really nice transitional look as well for the studio as we kind of go into those colder months. However, if I wanted to feel a little bit smarter, this has also been a very, um, a very uh, go-to look recently, and that is the chinos and overshirt look. 
which is has been heavily inspired by the robe i must admit i saw this in their lookbook in the summer i think um, so i've got the row trousers on really big wide leg pleated chinos with a oversized blue shirt from uniqlo and a white tank underneath paired with a black belt uh, my loewe cushion tote which is amazing for the studio this is the medium size i believe and it's really great can fit just all the basics in there that I need for the studio, including my laptop. And then I'm wearing these really nice uh, slim line, minimal St. Agby sandals, just to add some balance, because there's a lot of big oversized shapes in this outfit, and I think the sandals balance the look out really, really well. What I also love about this look as well is it can be transformed from day to night really easily, or kind of like day to fancy really easily. Sometimes in the studio it might be that I end up going out for a drink with someone afterwards or dinner, might be going out with friends afterwards. So this is a look that's really easy to turn into a nice evening look by simply changing the shoes and changing my hair. So I've popped on a little bit of a heel, nothing too high because I can't work, walk in heels at all, but I feel like these um, just kind of change the vibe of the outfit a little bit and also the slick back hair as well and then if I take off the shirt um, if the weather was appropriate enough I, I love this look so much it's just such a nice um, kind of casual dinner drinks look that still feels a little bit a little bit nice and fancy a really popular suggestion was first date slash date night now date night I'm fine with first date however my mind was blank. I have not been on a first date for a very, very long time. Um, so I was really, really stuck with this one. I decided to pick first day date instead of evening date because I felt like my date night look could also double up as a first date evening date. So this is what I would wear on a day date. You know, going for coffee maybe, grabbing some lunch. It's quite casual. It's really casual. I don't know if it's too casual. I don't know if I've missed the mask mark with this completely. Potentially could, probably wouldn't get a second date with this outfit. But when I was putting together the look, although there's not much putting together involved in this look, I knew that I felt confident in this look. And confidence always shines through, doesn't it? That's what they always say, and I do think it is true. Confidence does shine through. So I've just picked something that I feel confident in, kind of feel cute in. Uh, it's a tank top and jeans. <laughs> so it's a white tank top with Levi's 501s, my Jill Sander Birkenstocks and a cute tote bag. Super, super simple. But I think, like I said, I feel confident in this. I feel good in this. I feel like it's... I'm not overthinking it, I'm not putting too much effort in, but I still look nice. Um, also, like, let's be honest, Levi's are pretty flattering on the bum. So, um, you'll see in all of my looks, I don't get my legs out much, and that's because I'm not confident with my legs out. I'm much more of an arms out person. Um, I much prefer a sort of like tank top or a nice strappy top, so um, legs do tend to be covered. If it was a little bit chilly, I could just throw on this shirt to cover up my arms a little bit. Um, this is just like a plain long sleeved cotton shirt. Could also switch this out for a short sleeve shirt, which you'll see me put on in just a moment. Um, looking at this outfit now, I am seriously thinking like, is this just so underwhelming for a first date look? Who knows? Um, but this is what came to my mind this is what I would probably wear on a day date. <laughs> My date night look, however, I'm really confident in. Like I'm in, as in like, I'm really confident it's a, it's a good look. So Dean and I are actually going out for dinner this weekend. So I've had this outfit planned in my head for a couple of days now, and I'm so excited to wear it because it's just, I feel so good in it. I feel like it's so me. So just quickly going back to the whole, like, not getting your legs out thing. Like, I think a really easy look to go for on a date night is obviously a short dress. Um, and don't get me wrong, 
like they look awesome but I don't feel confident in short dresses I really don't feel confident with my legs out so for me it's always about a kind of strappy tank or a stra like a, a top with loads of nice details on and this St Agni top is just that I like to get my back out because I feel like that's my kind of nod to I guess a little bit of sexy seductiveness instead of legs um, so this St Agni top is beautiful because it's got some really nice strappy details on the back I've paired it with my um, baggy row chinos um, and then accessories I've gone for these gorgeous Jill Sander earrings they've got a very 90s vibe with the sort of chunky square shape then my Porto pouch which um, fits pretty much all of the essentials that you could need on a date night I wear this all the time when I'm going out to nice events in the evening now and then I've popped on the St Agni sandals again because you know I want a little bit of a heel now in case it was a bit chilly or I wanted to have my arms covered just to sort of at the beginning of the night as I walk to the restaurant or you know to the bar and a shirt is a great thing to throw on this is just a really plain uh, cotton one from Arquette or if I really wanted to zhuzh it up if I really wanted to feel smart a blazer now I when I put this on I felt so weird because I haven't worn a blazer for so long I felt so overly smart um but yeah that's that's gonna be my date like this weekend and I'm so excited ah this next look is another one where I really think I've missed the mark it is what I would wear to a job interview within the creative industry this one I really struggled with because my experience with job interviews has only been retail. Um, so they're the kind of job interviews where you just rock up in just all black, you know, you know how retail is. Um, so often I would just kind of get a nice dress, you know, I'd just have a nice dress from COS or a nice shirt and trousers. But then I guess outside of that kind of environment, job interview dressing is quite different, especially within the creative industry, because essentially you could wear what you wanted. But at the same time, you want to make a good impression. I guess you want to be smart as well. I guess it completely depends on the type of job. But my take on this scenario could be a complete miss. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's monochrome. So it's quite smart, um, but it's very, very loose and baggy. Could probably double up as a maternity wear, if I'm honest. So pregnant ladies, Keep your eye on this one, this can be quite a comfy one for you. So from top to bottom, uh, really simple loose shirt, um, oversized, I've just uh, rolled up the sleeves a little bit to add a bit of interest so it doesn't look too smart and undone the top button and the bottom buttons and then loose trousers as well. Um, so keeping it really comfortable because I don't want to feel uncomfortable in an interview, I want to be able to sit there and feel really comfortable and not worry that my clothes are going to make me feel all just horrible basically. I'm going to walk up to the camera soon and show you a close up. There we go. There's the shirt a little bit close up and then the trousers are actually these uh, finely pleated trousers from Malena Bear with an elasticated waist and then the Loewe cushion tote because it's a very smart business bag isn't it. And then Jill Sander Birkenstocks because I feel like these are a smart they're a smart sandal. I walked off screen very, very quickly. <laughs> I just really, I was really unsure about that look, but it was what came to my mind, so I stuck with it. I might have just completely, I don't know, it might be awful. Okay, next is what I would wear on a rainy day in the city. A very good one, very good suggestion because it's something that regularly you know, I have to regularly dress for. So I've actually gone for a pop of colour, got out the castle coat because it's, it is the raincoat, it is the best raincoat I own. Um, so it's this bright orange rubber raincoat and I've paired it with my blue Studio Nicholson jumper. I love these two colours together, I think they look so good. And then I've put on some grey trousers because I think grey looks much nicer with the blue as opposed to say like black trousers and it's still Kind of practical for a rainy day. Uh, La Mer camera bag because um, it's a good one for the rain, the rain doesn't cause any damage to it. The coat's fully waterproof so I can obviously do it up and um, I'll be fully protected. And then on my feet I'm wearing my Dr Martens because once again such a practical shoe, um, 
completely waterproof. I swear these shoes can literally withstand anything. They're so good. This is probably going to be the only time you see me with my legs out and that is a beach day look. Um, shorts with a bikini and a shirt thrown over the top is my beach day uniform. Just so good because you can just button up the shirt if you're going to pop into a shop or go somewhere for lunch. Um, they're both things that are really easy to kind of like screw up in your bag as well. Um, the shorts are amazing, they're from Arquette. They are really loose around the thigh. With denim shorts, I really don't like them when they're too tight and they cut in around the thighs. So uncomfortable. So these are really loose and they're slightly longer than your usual denim short. Uh, bikini is from Matteo. Uh, shirt is uh, by Milena Bayer, the one that I've featured quite a few times in this video already. Um, bag. I would probably have my Luebo basket bag. This is the medium one. Fits quite a lot in it actually. Even though it looks quite small, I can get a towel, a water bottle and all the other little bits that I need. If I was carrying a lot more, it would be this cos bag again because you can literally just fit a ton of stuff in it and you can wear it crossbody, which is also really helpful. Um, my hat is from Avenue. It's really good because you can kind of screw it up and it doesn't damage the hat or anything. And then I've got the row flip flops on. Sticking with the beach theme, this is what I would wear to uh, kind of like a fancy summer dinner or a fancy holiday dinner. So I love a kind of coordinating set and this Tove top and trousers are a matching set. The trousers are great because they're wide and they have an elasticated waist. They're so, so comfortable. I know I always say this about every outfit, but comfort is my priority, especially since all of these lockdowns and everything. I just don't have the time or the patience for uncomfortable clothes anymore. So in every scenario now, I want to be comfortable and this is exactly that. It's comfortable, but I also feel extremely chic. That's the balance I always want to strike. Um, and this set does that perfectly. In terms of accessories, I've kept it really simple. I've put those Jill Sander earrings on because they're just such a good statement. I also think this would look really nice if I had my hair scraped back in a bun. And then I'm wearing those flat uh, St. Agni sandals again. And then last but not least, what I would wear to a festival I almost didn't want to do this one because I don't like festivals. Straight up, really, really, really don't like festivals. I haven't been to a festival in over 10 years. I just, I'm not interested in them. However, I wanted to come up with an outfit. Um, so I took to, um, I went to Alexa Chung for inspiration because I feel like she's one of the best people at kind of doing festival looks that are practical but also look chic. However, I do not think I look chic in this outfit whatsoever, as you will see in just a moment. I just feel like with a festival, what's the point in putting in the effort to look chic? Because by the end of it, you are going to look terrible. I feel like at the end of a festival, I'd always look dreadful. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is my lovely look. <laughs> I've put my barber on because it is the I feel like it's the quintessential festival jacket. It's just so practical. Um, and then I put a hoodie on and some jeans. This is my festival look if it was due to rain or be a bit cold, which I feel like is most of the festivals we have here in the UK. Um, weekday jeans, an uh, Arquette hoodie, and then my Blundstone boots, which I got earlier this year. I cannot wait to wear these more this winter and properly break them in because they still look really new and shiny. And then my La Mer camera bag. That would be a very relaxed festival look for me, I think. And if it was warm, I could easily just get rid of the hoodie, maybe skip the hoodie and just have a t-shirt on underneath there and then keep the coat around my waist or something. So there you have it, 10 looks for 10 different scenarios. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I really enjoyed putting it together. It was really fun going through everyone's responses and then kind of thinking about what I would wear. Um, it was also very fun to film. So let me know if you enjoyed it and if you'd like me to do another one because I think there were still so many great uh, responses that I, weren't able, I wasn't able to include in this one. For example, what I would wear to a wedding. Um, I didn't feature that in this one simply because 
I don't know. I really don't know. Last wedding I went to, I wore a black dress, which I don't think many people would um, find helpful. So um, it turns out actually I'm going to a wedding in November. So I do, I, it is something I need to think about. I do need to actually come up with an actual outfit to wear. So I'll do that in the next one. And then I can also do what I would wear to the grocery store, what I would wear on a flight, what I wear around the house. So yeah, let me know if you want to see another one. That's already four looks I could include. So we're well on our way to another video. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I hope you enjoyed this video. And maybe it gave some of you some inspiration. Um, thank you to Farfetch for partnering with me with this video. As always, links, T's and C's, and all the information that you could ever need will be in the description box. No doubt I'll miss something crucial off. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.